Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the JCC of Metro Detroit's Cultural Arts virtual presentation this afternoon. My name is Jamie Loeb, and I'm the Senior Director of Cultural Arts here at the JCC of Metro Detroit. Glad you could all be with us. While you're here, please do take a minute to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And of course, remember to like this video, click the little alert bell, all of those YouTube things. It will really enhance your experience going forward. It'll help you keep track of all of the great events we have coming up and you know, really keep you in the know. So another great way to stay in the know is to head on over to our website, jccdebt.org slash cultural arts. And I will put that up for you right here. There we go. So that is the hub for all things cultural arts at the JCC of Metro Detroit. You can join our email list, check out our Facebook page, all of that stuff. And it's also the place where you can go to buy tickets for The Tobacconist, which we have a virtual screening running all the way through August 14th. So there's still plenty of time to see the film. Head on over to our website and get tickets for yourself. If you are watching on, an, on a computer, you can add your comments, <clears throat> excuse me, below to the comment section. Our audience uh, comments and questions are always part of the fun, so don't be shy. You can also text your comments and questions to this number right here, 248-973-7286, and we will keep that number on the screen for you so you don't have to worry too much about remembering it, but there it is. You can uh, text comments and questions if you just don't wanna use the comment feature or if you're watching on your TV. So speaking of comments, we know that we have some people from outside of Metro Detroit joining us. So I believe we have some people from Ann Arbor and possibly from farther afield. So feel free to drop us a comment, let us know where you're watching from so we can say hello. So the JCC of Metro Detroit is really thrilled that we've been able to offer events like this throughout the summer for free to our community. But of course, we need your help. So if you enjoyed this presentation, if you've enjoyed some of our other events, go on over to our website, jccdebt.org slash cultural arts, and click the little support button at the top and you'll find all sorts of ways to donate, to get involved, to support the cultural arts, and the high quality innovative programming that we'll be doing well into the future. So now to today's event. We have with us a returning guest interviewer, Elliot Wilhelm, and the star of The Tobacconist, Simon Morse. So most of you from the Metro Detroit area will probably know Elliot Wilhelm. He's one of the deans of the film scene around town. He's been the director of, and curator of the Detroit Film Theater uh, since it began in the 70s. He's one of the leaders of the Cinetopia Film Festival, and he has been involved with more exciting projects around town that I could list, including the Detroit Jewish Film Festival. So we're thrilled to have him as part of our event today. Our guest interviewee is Austrian actor Simon Orze, who is, as I said, the star of The Tobacconist. He's the son of two renowned European actors, and made his film debut in 2006 at the ripe old age of nine. Since then, he's been consistently seen in acclaimed German, act, German language TV shows, film, everything. He was nominated for Best Young Actor from the New Faces Award for his work in The Tobacconist, and we're really thrilled to have him today. So please join me in welcoming Elliot Wilhelm and Simon Morse. Hey, Simon. Hello. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good to see you. I'm, I'm quite well. Um, and I'm very happy to be talking with you because uh, this film really took me by surprise. Uh, I thought it was wonderful. It's, mm -hmm. it's the kind of movie that could go wrong in so many different ways and didn't. Uh, and one of the reasons it is so engaging um, and, and so unexpectedly human uh, is your performance. You are the centerpiece of the film, obviously, and I was really struck by your your vulnerability and your strength uh, in terms of your character's presentation. It was extremely believable. Uh, I was with you all the way, and 
I only just now heard from Jamie that you are the son of a couple of renowned actors. Uh, I, I guess that shouldn't shock me, having seen what you were able to do in the film. But I'm I'm really curious as to what it's like to be brought up in a family of renowned anything, but certainly a family of renowned <laughs> actors. Um, did you did you get the acting bug very early, and did they try to keep you from from doing it? It was um, it was very interesting to to grow up in a family like this. Like both of my parents were actors, and uh, since the age of, of I don't know, since since the age of four, I was at the theater the whole time, and I was meeting all these uh, all these people from the theater, and it it was a very fascinating time um, growing growing up like this. But um, sometimes I was thinking like maybe one parent could do something different that I can see a different kind of view on this world but all in all it was a fascinating experience um but i have to say that my parents never pushed me to do acting they were more like do what you want and and really think think about your choices and i mean i, I through my parents i also i also i also saw the, the dark parts of of this job it's 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 a very emotional job and it, it it takes a lot of you and i saw a lot of actors who, who kind of um had 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 hard times doing it so um the good thing is that that it gave me a very uh, realistic uh real, realistic picture of, of what what this job is by growing up like this and um the more movies i did the more the more serious it got um, the more my parents were like, okay, um, Simon, you really have to think. Do you want to do it? And is it something? Is it something you 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 wanna you wanna do for life? Yeah. When you talk about the dark parts, um, are you referring in in some way to uh, being very involved with the character that you're playing, or is it? Just yeah, it's it's. It's it's the emotional aspect of it, like like being involved in the character and 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 and, and um, dealing a lot with with with. As an actor, you deal a lot with yourself because you you think about your emotions when you think about the emotions of the character you play, but also the dark parts. I mean, it's it's not easy the whole time to to find a job, and it's a very competitive. Um, competitive field and there's a lot of pressure you have to deliver you have a big part in the movie and everybody as expect expects from you that you deliver and all that parts it's it's there's a lot of pressure but also a lot of of, of beauty in it so and you worked on stage yeah. as well um two times in my life but more okay. film yeah because yeah stage is my parents did most of their their time they did stage work um, but but I got more into the film film business. Yeah. Did they bring their characters home with them, or did they, mm. they leave them behind? That's interesting. Sometimes after after a long show, when my parents came home, I I I realized that they had some they had some. I could tell if the if the show was going was was good for them or not. They, maybe they, they were not bringing the character home, but they were bringing the, the emotional aspects of the, of the show home. Like if they had a good time, they were full of energy, but if it, if it was going bad and maybe they had, then they had some anger or, or some f frustration. And it's, it, I think it's a difficult thing to, to leave the work you did uh, during today or at the night of the show. To, to leave it at the place. It's, it's, you, you always bring it home in this job, I, I think. Yeah, my yeah. job's not nearly as intense, but I know that, that feeling. Although now we're home all the time. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a matter of whether or not you're going to, to live with whatever it is you do or, or take a few minutes off. But let's get to the tobacconist um, because you were so perfect for the role. Um, were you considered right from the beginning? as the person who was going to play Franz or did you, did you audition? Um, I, I, I had an audition, like two, two or three of them, like two or three rounds. Mm -hmm. um, but the director, Nicholas Leitner, told me that he, he already had like a lot of people 
a lot of young people to play France, like a, a lot of auditions. He already had a lot of auditions, maybe 100, 200, something like this. And then they, then it took some time that they came up with me because I think they, they went to schools in Austria and, and picked some, some students and, and there were a lot of people. But at the end, they, they asked me if I want to come to the audition. And I knew the novel and I loved the book. And I was like, yes, I want this. I want this. And so I was very happy and, and, and it worked. Yeah. And I have not read the novel. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I'm just wondering if, if you are emo emotionally invested in the novel, um, if you had any, any kind of input uh, in terms of shooting the film, shooting particular scenes that, that you felt when you read it um, should have been done perhaps in a different way than your director? What's that, what is that experience Ooh, like? That's a, a dangerous question. Uh, <laughs> um, well, you're, you're in Vienna, so I don't think you're gonna come after me right now. So I feel no, like I'm gonna ask no, you a no, dangerous no. question. You're safe, you're safe. Okay. Um, um, the, 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 the interesting thing is that I got the novel um, before I knew that they want to make a movie out of it. I, I read it before. And I loved the book, and I loved the language of the of the novel, and it was it was something that really, um, um, yeah, I, it was just a good book. And and then of course, when you start shooting the movie, you compare the scenes with with the novel, and sometimes you think, oh, I I, I felt I felt more depth reading the novel than reading the screenplay but that's not a surprise because a novel is yeah. is full of words and a screenplay is working um is later working because of the visual things which 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 um, will be a part of the screenplay of course so yeah. um and then on the set when we had all this this um, um, um the whole tobacco shop was built and I saw the other characters. I saw the other amazing actors. And then the whole thing got to like, the, there was life in the, in the, in, in the screenplay. And this is something that, that really worked. Um, yeah. There's a, there's a great deal of um, emotional content in just the way the film looks um, in the settings that you were referring to the tobacco shop, but also all the detail of how the movie flows, mm -hmm. uh, its pacing, and all of those are, are, are probably things that you, you can't get from reading a script. But That's true. Yeah. it has a, a, a real feel, uh, including the fantastic uh, elements right from the thunderstorm at the very beginning, which mm. en ends in a way that- The dream sequences. Yeah. The dream sequences as well, which it can often be um, something that, that simply call attention to themselves, but here they really serve the story. Um, mm. And the, the Freudian elements which come in through the introduction of Freud himself mm -hmm. uh, add another element. One of the greatest effects, of course, in the movie is Bruno Ganz. Uh, yes. One of the, for my life, and, and as Jamie was mentioning, I started <clears throat> programming films um, at the Detroit Institute of Arts back in the early 1970s. And I remember going to see at the New York Film Festival in 19, I think it was 76 maybe, um, a film by Eric Romer, uh, Mar Marquisa von O. And mm -hmm. Bruno Ganz gave this very stylized performance. I'd never seen him before. And beginning after that, he suddenly began to appear in film after film after film. Um, and in, in Wings of Desire, um, and even his performance in, in the Werner Herzog Nosferatu, he just became mm -hmm. this iconic performer. And mm -hmm. it was thrilling for me to see him in what is essentially a small part in terms of screen time in, mm -hmm. in the film, but a part that he embraces um, and embodies so fully that you almost feel comfortable completely comfortable with him from, from the very beginning. Mm. He's a great Freud. Yeah. And, he, and Freud's He's been played by Freud, so yeah. many different actors. Um, and it's such, but, I think it's such a difficult uh, uh, thing to, pl to, to play such a intellectual character, such a strong man and such a well-known man. Everybody has an opinion on Freud or has a, is, is fantasizing how, how actors should portray him. And it's a very, 
uh, it's a it's a not an easy choice to say I'm gonna play Freud. It's, it's, it's right. very uh, and he, but he, he has also, such a uh, yeah. He, he he seems to keep his intellect um, sort of buttoned up under that coat. Um, it, you know it's there and you feel it and you see it in his yeah. eyes, but he doesn't make a show out of it. Yeah, he's not throwing it. He's not throwing the, the, this at the audience. He's just, no. he's really, it's the presence. It's the presence. Yeah, yeah. and he doesn't act mm. the great the great man, but he's a yeah. very comforting presence through, yeah. through the film. And you want to lie down on his couch and you want to <laughs> tell him your, your problems. That's um, true. It's, it's, um, a movie that's, I think, modulated really, really wonderfully. And it tells what people want, which is a great story. Uh, and the story is, is set in a period of great historical uh, import and of, of terrible tragedy and small acts of heroism. But what I, one of the things that, that drew me to the film that I loved so much is that it keeps it human. It keeps it about the characters mm -hmm. and you're always aware of those relationships in the context of the bigger story mm -hmm. but at no time is it ever overwhelmed by any of those those cinematic elements uh, and, and yet I also thought it had um, and this isn't the Elliot show so I'll, I'm gonna let you talk at some point but <laughs> no it's, 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 it's a, it's it a has, pleasure listening to you, you know it's, it's the widescreen imagery the the way it was lit the color, the camera movements of the film were all at the service of the story. Mm. But they give you a kind of comforting feel that there is a craft involved. You know, you know how it is when you start to watch a movie and you're not sure at first and you, you don't know. There's some point at which you relinquish control and you say, OK, I'm going mm. with this. Yeah. And this happened very early in this movie for me, which allows you to feel the pleasure of, mm -hmm. of the storytelling, it never felt condescending, mm -hmm. um, and I and I credit you greatly because that performance could have been um, maudlin, <laughs> it it could have mm -hmm. been overly sweet. Uh, all of your feelings could have been telegraphed at any moment. Mm -hmm. um, and that's 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 so interesting that you say that because that was my fear um, when I when I was reading the script and I was thinking about okay, how wanna how do I want to portray um, this this young man. I thought like the story is very emotional. And if I start acting like throwing these emotions the whole time and, and, and being, being showing, showing the emotions the whole time and being so, it's being too much was, my, was a bit of my, my concern. Like, yeah. Yeah, I want to keep it natural and human and not like, I don't, I, I don't want it to, 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 I don't know. Uh, it's hard to describe. I don't want to 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 um, show something which is not there just because it's 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 emotional. Uh, That's right. Um, and and you nailed it. You you know you you uh, you didn't over telegraph um, the the message to the audience. It, movie making is um, such a uh, an, an extraordinary strange art because in a minute. Uh, with, with enough false moves, I think an audience can feel that they're way ahead of you. They're way ahead of the story. And mm -hmm. they're just going to sit there and slog through it. Or that the film is racing ahead of them. It's that, that pacing that keeps uh, a reasonably intelligent viewer involved all the way through, both emotionally in terms of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen that often. And here it did. Um, and in an era when set in an era when certain kinds of cliches can take over a story and didn't didn't hear. So um, I was very impressed by everybody's work in, in the movie. Um, tell me a little bit, I mean, you've been involved with this film for a long time. Uh, I think, did it have its debut like well over a year ago or? Yeah, I it, it was, um, I think it was 2018, if I'm right, yeah. Right. So you've so been talking some about time ago. Film. <laughs> a lot, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a long time. Um, it it took a while to get to the United States. Um, yeah, it took a while, but I'm very happy that it did. I was yeah. I was uh, surprised, and it, it really it's it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's a, a film that I hope, at least at some point, and it, and it may have played already in some cities prior to March, but I hope that Americans get a chance to see it on mm. the big screen. 
because it's a fantastic looking um, piece of work. But talk a little bit about uh, your reception. I mean, I assume you've been to festivals and toured with the film um, all over the globe. Yeah. What, what kind of responses did the movie get? Mm, it, I think it was, it was interesting that the time, the time when the movie came out in Austria and Germany and Switzerland and in, in Europe, um, it, it, it was, it was a good time because the political situation in Austria and, 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 and in Germany was, was very, um, concerning and the right wing parties are getting stronger again. And this was, I think this was the perfect time for the movie and, and, um, a lot of young people watch the movies, movies in the cinema through school. It's also like the, the novel is, is, is on the reading list in German schools and also in Austrian schools. And, it's, and, and the, the movie came out um, at the right time, I think. And the response was always very, um, it was a positive response. It was about, um, a, lot, a lot of people talked about the political aspects of the movie and, how, and they, they always um, tried to, to, to link it with the, with the, the, with the with our Present. time, like what, right. what are the, yeah. And, and that was interesting. And it was a very political response, I would say, yes. Yeah, I, I think at this moment in particular, uh, well, over the last three or four years, um, people are seeing politics in everything. And it's only, it's, it's only natural um, that we would see our, our era reflected um, in, a, in a film of, of that era. Um, somebody's asking a question. Um, yeah. Wants to know the significance of the piece of glass. This is a question oh. from, from Bonnie. Um, mm. And Bonnie also wants to know if you're an excellent swimmer. She wants to know if I'm an excellent swimmer. That's what she wants. I'm, I'm, okay. And no, I'm not. I would say I'm, I'm a normal swimmer. <laughs> yeah. But, but if, um, the glass, the glass question is is more for the director, I would say. Mm. But um, I can I can say what it was, um, what I was thinking for myself with this piece of glass. I think I was talking to Nicholas, the director, and we were we were talking about this part of the story. And um, f first of all, it's something that Franz takes with him from his hometown. From this small village in, 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 in the Austrian, from the Austrian countryside, and it's also, and that's something that Nicola said, and that's very interesting. I think he thought that, you know, in some in some part and in, in, at some time um, moments in the movie, Franz is taking the glass and is 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 um, pointing at some uh, at some persons with with the light reflection. Right. And Nicola said, like for him, that's like that that's that's a symbol very symbolic visual thing that Franz is Franz is um observing his his is, is, is observing the people he 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 um connects with and is observing the political times and is observing the city and is is getting is is growing up and this was more like this um seeing something with the glass yeah and that's that was his his this explanation, yeah, like like a flash photograph, yeah, yeah, and it was it was memorable when he used it to look at Freud getting on the train, also, yeah, for example, yeah, yeah. Um, the the settings in the film are all um, they they appear. Whoop, you okay? I'm sorry. I'm. Sorry. It's all right. That's right. I'd fall asleep at my questions also. I, I crashed. I crashed. <laughs> you okay, though? I'm okay. Okay. Um, the settings in the film look very lived in, but also very designed. Um, mm -hmm. Was the, I mean, the digital work on the movie was really mm -hmm. quite, quite wonderful uh, because some of the streets looked, looked new. Um, but you were saying something earlier before we went on the air about, about Freud's house and where it really really was the street i think that's the one you yeah were about, yeah right? yeah Can yeah you it's, tell it's us called, about that? yeah it's called the backgasse and it's a street it's a street very famous in vienna because it's very 
How how was the word? How did you say it? Steep. Steep. As steep. like walking up and it's down a, the streets in San yeah. Francisco. Yeah. And, and like this, and it's a very steep uh, uh, street, and so we couldn't we couldn't shoot at the original place because there are a lot of shops in the street. It's a very famous thing in Freud's house. There's a big museum. Uh, you don't have the old cobblestone streets, but you have the very modern streets and it's, 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 it couldn't be like, it would be too expensive to, to shoot there. So we were shooting at the flat street. And when you asked me before, what was the response? Of course it was like political response and all that, but also a lot of people said like, but this street is not, is not steep. What happened? And it's just, so it, of course it was not the original place, but it was, it was in Vienna. It was in Vienna. Yeah. Yeah. We, we Detroit found us. Oh. They found a street with, with, um, with um, cobblestones, which made it easier. So there, the, so the F, SFX team could, could work with that. Yeah. Yeah. Films are, are set in our minds um, and in lands that are not necessarily absolutely perfectly realized on screen. Detroiters know um, who have seen the Martin Scorsese film, um, The Irishman, which ah, I've seen it, uh, yeah. last year. And the disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa takes place at a restaurant that lots of Detroiters know. And in the film, the street, very busy street that it's actually set on, as if it were completely depopulated and, and covered with mm -hmm. trees. But in a sense, if you, if you take a look at the film, it's, it's really a, a, a psychological impact that I think the director was trying mm -hmm. to achieve, seeing things through the eyes of the person telling this story. Um, yeah. Realism's overrated <laughs> at the movies. Yeah. It, it, uh, it, those, those details tend to drift away. Also, Nicholas, Nicholas told me that one time he said, real um, realism wasn't, was not our, our goal with this movie. That, that's right. not our goal. We don't make a historic, uh, correct movie. That's 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 not the goal. It's Which, more like an emotional story. I was about to use that yeah. word because sometimes, yeah. in order to achieve emotional realism, you have to to go outside of reality. Yeah, because it's it's yeah. that. Emo and I, and I'm sure that as an actor and a, and a trained actor and and being brought up by actors, um, that emotional aspect is at the core of what people are talking about when they're playing a part is yeah. how do I, how do I convey those feelings to an audience? Mm -hmm. And if you're a director or a set designer, you have those same issues. This is where it was actually happened. This is what it actually looked like, but that's not the feeling I'm trying to convey. <laughs> that's, that's not how it felt. Yeah. So yeah. we have to design it that way. Uh, and this movie walks that tightrope and manages to do it quite beautifully. And, and yeah, I, hate to, um, I hate to keep referring to another actor, but, but I'm very obsessed with Bruno Gantz. Can you <laughs> tell me what it was? Was this the first time you had met him? Yeah, it was the first film? time. Yeah, and it was one of his last films. Yes. He passed away um, um, some time after the movie. And I, I knew Bruno Gantz from a lot of movies and also from theater in Vienna. He made this very um, impressing, uh, impressive uh, uh, place at, at the Burgtheater also, and very, very um, difficult uh, parts he played. And it was always a pleasure watching him. And so when, when Nicholas told me, yeah, uh, Sigmund Freud will be Bruno Ganz, I was very, I was nervous. I was just nervous because as an actor, of course, you ask yourself, how can I, um, will I, will I survive? Will I survive uh, <laughs> acting with him? I mean, or will it be obvious for the for the viewers that that I'm like uh, much younger and not as experienced and not as good as him? And all this all this anxiety enters your head if you if you hear this name, you know. And then we had like one rehearsal. We were um, we were reading the script, and it was just he's such a charming um, person, and it really helped me that he was. He was open, we talked, and, and he was giving me a good feeling. He was giving me a, a feeling of safety and not, not pressure. And that's something I really enjoyed. And I, I also, when we were on the set, 
it was so so interesting to see see his um, concentration, how he's how he's working. It's it's amazing. He's just on a set and he's very concentrated, and but also at the same time, and that's the hard thing. That's a difficult part. He's concentrated, but at the same time, he's he's not pressure. He, there is no tension in his body, but he's he's very focused, but not like he's not trying too hard. And that that's really something I, I wanted to to or I learned from 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 working with him. Do you think that uh, comes from confidence that he that he has in his abilities? I think it's of course it's confidence, but also. I think Bruno Ganz, a lot of people, I think a lot of directors said in interviews said it about Bruno Ganz, also Nicolas, he's a very smart actor. Like he's a very smart actor. You, you look at him and not a lot must go on in not a lot of dialogue or something, but you, you can, you can nearly see him think. And that's something which is difficult to achieve. And it's something that Bruno Ganz has. And, and I would imagine it would be um, difficult, if not unusual, at least, for someone who has, and I've never seen him on stage, but I understand his reputation, as you said, as a stage performer is extraordinary. Mm -hmm. But he also, in close-up um, on film, and I want to ask you about that also, the, the, the differences between acting on stage and, and on film, um, he will make very, very small movements but conveys a great deal with his face. Anyone who's ever seen the Wim Wenders film, Wings of Desire, in which- Yeah, him or long, long passages in which there's really no dialogue. You are just seeing his pleasure as this character who is a, an angel uh, who has come down to earth and mm. to, to, to telescope the story, um, decides he wants to become mortal and give up immortality because he really likes a good cup of coffee. Mm. And it's about his, yeah. his love of and discovery of the sensuality that humans take for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you see in his face, there are moments in the film in which that, that pleasure in lots of things, uh, whether it's coffee, whether it's sex, whatever it happens to be, is is so palpable and yet you're comfortable in his presence all the time um it's it's something that i don't understand how how people can be that expressive well, my admiration for mm -hmm. actors is is unending um so tell me a little bit about the difference between performing on stage and i know you haven't done that much stage performing but yeah, know. I have to say it was only two two times. Yeah. Uh, I would say from the technical part, it's very difficult to to have a good voice on stage. In film, you can have your normal voice. It's even better if you have your normal voice. If you don't, uh, if you don't make it stronger or louder, but. At stay in, if you're working a theater play, it's 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 really I have the feeling there's a lot of technique I I I I, I was not having at this moment like that that your that the language is 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 a it's a tool you have to work on and you really have to 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 make it strong and I I I, I um remember my parents when we're when they were at home and they were practicing. With their with their voice and it's a very important part and I would say that's more important at theater um, and um, also it's I was I was more nervous when I was when I was um, on stage the, the the seconds before the play started the seconds where you wait to to go on stage that that was horrible it was really horrible. Because it's it's not like a take. You can you can make a lot of takes, and you don't have to deliver the whole time. But on stage, you're kind of you have to deliver. It's a, it's a, it's really. But that's also the thing which is interesting about theater plays that it's that it's all now in this moment, and you are interacting with the audience, and you get immediate response from 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 the audience. That's something that is very that's that's theater. And that's interesting and intense and amazing. <laughs> and so that's, the anxiety yeah. that you feel just before going out 
does that that dissipates once you're in front of the audience? Yes, right. Yes, because you're. you're in I, the I don't moment. know why. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I'm in the moment. I'm I'm trying to be the character. It really goes away when I'm as soon as I enter the stage. It goes away. Yeah. I did um, television uh, for for twenty years or so, just introducing movies uh, on a de local Detroit radio station, mm -hmm. and you you talk to the camera, and it, it was horrifying at first to try and say something, even vaguely witty because there was nobody to respond. You were just talking to a piece mm -hmm. of glass. So you have to have that, that kind of imagination that this is going to work <laughs> because yeah, yeah. once once you don't know if it's going to work, it's not going to work because- There's no response. Work. There's no That's response. Right. That's right. Just the wall yeah. staring at you. Yeah. Shooting a film yeah. must also in some sense be like that because yeah. uh, I don't maybe I guess your director gives you feedback yeah, he does. But the, the biggest response, and I, I would say that the, the most important response is the response you get from your from your co-actors, like playing with them. You get you 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 kind of you get the feeling, you get the energy. Are we on a good way? Are we not? <laughs> That's really right. you can you can feel the vibration of of, of <laughs> if it's good or not. Most of the time, I've, for me, it's like that. Um, we, we've got a question from somebody who's watching right now, um, wants to know uh, about mentors, if there were mentors in terms of, of acting who were important to you. Um, I wouldn't say that I have like one mentor. It was more like um, all the films I did when I was younger and, and, and um, all that really got me into, into, into thinking about the art of acting and all that. But if I have to think about it, there's one movie I did um, 2014, 16. It was a um, um, cinema movie called um, Einer von uns on German, which means one of us by Stefan Richter. And this was such an important movie for me because I, I really, um, I think I really developed as an actor through this movie. And I, I learned a lot from Stefan Richter from... Julian Sharp, who was also very important for me. Um, Jack Hofer, which was a, um, a um, co-actor and Dominic Singer. Like th this, this movie was important for me. I would say if somebody asked me, do you have a mentor? I would say this movie was my mentor. Um, this, this experience working on this movie, meeting all those people and kind of being brave enough to question the way you act. You acted before, questioning, questioning exactly your work and and really trying to find new ways yeah i would say that was important for me uh, were you familiar yourself with the era of the early 1930s um that that this film the tobacconist um is about prior to to going into the making of it i know you read the, the novel but in your own life what what did you know about what happened um, and what the world was like. The thing is, as an Austrian, um, in, if you grow if you grow up as an as an Austrian, you have a lot of a lot of uh, like a big part. I would say maybe. I mean, I don't want want to say anything wrong, but I have the feeling like sixty percent of the history teachings we have in high school and and are are uh, about this era about the Second World War, about the time before the Second World War, about the, the Anschluss, all that. So I had a lot of knowledge about it because it's, it's such an important part in the, in the Austrian history classes, which is important, I think. But, um, so it helped me. It helped me that I, I kind of had, a, I had an image of this time before. Yeah. And... Uh I, right now, I'm assuming that you don't have any difficulty finding work. Um, my guess is that you've got a lot of projects lined up. Um, I would say uh, often you think like after such a cinema movie, it's running all smooth and perfect, but that's not the case. It's it's always you have to go to auditions and sometimes it works, sometimes not. And there's a very interesting project I do next year which I'm very happy to do. And of course, now it's a bit difficult because of the virus to work. Yep. Of course. Yep. Yeah. Everything's pushed back. 
um, mm -hmm. everything is is delayed, and we yeah. you know we hope this will change. Somebody yeah, it, asked a question about um, the um, the notes posted on the windows, and those were your dreams. I'm, yes. I'm assuming, yeah. Those were the dreams, and um, that's also a very symbolic act to to uh, in such a time, in such a political time with this regime to to go out and show the people your dreams that's how much more open I, can you be yeah yeah that's that's the thing nicolaus wanted to 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 show with yeah. this with with this sequences yeah it was beautifully realized uh, as was i wanted a cigar as i watched the picture mm -hmm. the the you know the discussion of the smell and the feel and and the just the pleasure that you can mm -hmm. get from from something like that. I, 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 when you say this, I I, I can remember the, the the time when Bruno Ganz was on on set, and it was shooting day. I don't know. We were shooting. I think it was three days in a row in his flat where we were doing all the cigar things, and he was so sick and tired of the cigars <laughs> because he had he had to smoke them one after another the whole time, the whole time. And that's yeah. Yeah. So. We as viewers don't don't see all of no. those all of those things. We just see the pleasure and yeah, the, the pleasure. Yeah. 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 Jamie, did you have some questions that people are are bringing in? So I want you to feel free to step yes. in. <laughs> yes, we do. So we've got a few more questions. Uh, so speaking of cigars, some Bonnie. <laughs> dun, dun, Sometimes dun. a cigar is just a cigar. Yes, as Freud, she wants as to Freud know. Would have said what they smelled like so i guess it's a question number one were they actual cigars did they have real cigar smell or was it just sort of prop magic um, i think bruno Ganz wished they were prop magic but they were real mm. so they smelled like cigars <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> it smells like <laughs> like smoke <laughs> Like cigar smoke, yeah, but it's very heavy, and you. Um, it's also very. I'm not a big cigar smoker, but it's. Um, I like the smell. I like the smell. It's very smoky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if if I uh, I believe there smoking is still a little more of a thing in Austria than here in the U.S., where it's been mostly banned out of existence in most places. Mm. Um, so was i mean given the age you are i'm interested to know was cigar smoke a familiar smell to you when you got on set or was that unfamiliar to you it was a familiar smell yes mm. i was also i was um it's it's very ironic because i start i stopped smoking before the project like one year before the project i was not smoking and then I was so nervous that I started smoking again at the tobacconist movie. And um, it was it was like that, yeah. But not cigars, more like cigarettes. But it's true, in, in Austria, I mean, a lot of people smoke. And it's just, they banned it last year. They banned it last year from, from it was allowed till last year to smoke inside of, of bars or cafes or something like this. And they banned it last year. <laughs> I never. I, I, I guess. I guess in America it's been it's for since, a long time. I don't know. Long, a lot of years, right? Yeah. yeah. I was just going to jump in about that because my my parents were were chain smokers. Um, they smoked all through my childhood and all through my teenage years, and ultimately it did them in. Um, and I never I never took up the habit, but I only noticed later in life that the smell that everybody complained of. Uh, in a restaurant, oh, that's the smoking section. It smells so horrible. I got to get away from it. I loved it. It it smelled like my childhood. It smelled comforting to me mm. um, because there you was a connection. Always, yeah. I associated it with my parents, yeah. and mm. I would try to sort of lean over to a table where people were smoking just to to get it. And it was a, a kind of a Proustian uh, thing. It it just took mm. me back. To a happy part yeah. of, of my life. Yeah. 
And I figure at my age now, maybe I'll start smoking. I was thinking mm -hmm. about it. What can I lose now? Except it's too expensive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jamie. Oh. Judy. Here. Judy, you're right. Uh, I was I was beginning I was beginning uh, beginning to wonder when the nude question will come. That's it, right. It took some time. Yeah. You were in a few nude scenes. Did you really have to see what what is it written? Uh, um, did you really have that scene in the snow? Were you? And it oh. probably wasn't real snow either. <laughs> no, it wasn't real snow. No, it wasn't real That's snow. That's good. It was what kind of material was it? I can't remember. Um, uh, it was some kind of, it was very, it wasn't cold, which was nice. That's good. Yeah, it wasn't cold. Yeah. And the question and also that goes on with, was this the first time you've ever done a nude scene? Okay, so we got that. Um, on. Completely nude? Yes, yes, that, that, it was the first time. But with my co-actress, Emma Drogonova, it was, it was, um, we were both a bit worried, okay, how will it work? Will it be... Will it be strange on set? But it was, it was, it was, um, it worked perfectly well, and it wasn't, um, uh, it wasn't uncomfortable or something. Right. Yeah, it really, it was okay. Yeah. And Nicholas and also, you know, then you have a smaller team on set. If you have a new scene, there are not like forty people watching you, but only the people who re really need to be there. Yeah. So they took care of that. Were there people involved in the production, <clears throat> either actors or or uh, technical people, who had strong personal connections to the material, um, either through their families or or memories of some kind, um, that they talked about? Um, I could imagine that some of the. the some of the team members had some stories from that time, but they were not really talking about it. But I, I, I am, am nearly everybody in Austria who, who has a certain age has some connection with this era, family based. Right. But it wasn't so much of a topic, no. Um, and, and somebody's just written a question, wants to know how you felt about the intensity of Franz's despair um, about the affair. And I'm assuming the question is about the quick departures that kept happening um, every time. What, that, that, what was your that, take on that, uh, Franz's feeling of abandonment, I assume, uh, continually? Um. Of course, you try as an actor to to find um, emotional um, truth, and you you search for this truth often um, in yourself and and what you you experienced. And I was thinking, okay, the whole thing with Emma, the whole love story, and falling in love and not being not being wanted, or or at the beginning not being wanted, and then at the end being being left alone, all that is something I, 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 I had in my life. I was in love too. And, and it, it's not that every time you're in love, it works. Sometimes you're just, right. you're just um, left, left alone. And that's, that's something that helped, that really helped in trying to, to think about my experience with, with the feeling of being abandoned and um, all that. And yeah, it's, it's, it helps me to, to, think about my experience. But also, not only, like some people say, you always have to, to get all the things out of your, of your experience. And that's also not true. I would say it helps, but sometimes I really want to work with my fantasy and, and, and really want to create something which is maybe partly in me, but not completely. And that's also, that, that's a lot of fun and a very creative uh, process. Yeah. And when you do that, um, do those things feel to you, even though they weren't necessarily real life experiences, but experiences that you conjured for a performance, does it feel like those do become a part of your experience? That those are things that, that happened to you in some way? And I don't mean confusing real life with, with acting, but yeah. that the emotions that you, that you draw out of yourself for a performance, do, do those feelings stay with you and, and become useful to you later on? Not just as an actor, but as a human being. 
yeah, and that's it stays, and that's also um, a very beautiful part of this job that you that you really work with yourself and work with your emotions, and every every project you take seriously will will kind of change you or will will help you with your emotional understanding and that's all in acting and in life like right that's 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 a beautiful thing about this this job and it doesn't matter if you're an actor a director if you're a crew member if you're doing camera it's if you're seriously um working on something and 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 really think about the emotions and the story and about the characters, the time. It really, if you take it, if you take it seriously, it will have a, an impact on your life. And that's that's the, the nice thing about being creative and and, and working on something. Yeah. Is, it, is it hard to find a good script? Mm, y yes, I would say <laughs> it's, but it's not easy to write a good script. I'm, I'm sure not. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's it takes. Um, it's also interesting that the formula to find a good story is not there. It's you have, of course, you have some things you know that will work. The audience will like it, but you never, you can't tell if a story will 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 touch the audience or not. And that's that's a good thing. Right. If we had a formula, it would be boring. I guess. Have you worked on a film that came out very differently than what you anticipated when you when you first entered the project? Um, mm. That you thought yes. was a great script, but that didn't work, or vice versa? Great script that didn't work. I'm not asking you to name which one. I'm just wondering. Yeah, that, that I, just want, I, I wanted to, to say I, I can't name something right now. No, here. I don't want you to do um, that. So there was one movie I worked on, the script was bad, and the movie was even worse. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, you're gonna say the that, <laughs> that's something I remember. No, but of course, sometimes you're, but at, at one time, I, I, we had a script which I thought was like, um, not that interesting. It was okay. There was like, a, the fundamental things were okay, and then it worked very nice. And maybe because of the actors uh, or the the chemistry between the actors, I hadn't a big part in it, but I saw it and I was surprised. And yeah. It's it's uh, it's all a form of magic to me. I, I've yeah. had occasion to to read scripts, not because I was being offered a part. I've never acted, but um, read a script and then see it turned into a film. Um, it's it's difficult to imagine all of the things that go into filmmaking, all the different elements that go into yeah. it, which you, I don't know how, how you do it, that you can just read a script and understand the, the qualities of the movie that are gonna come out later, um, but. But it's not, like, it's not like you understand it the whole time. <laughs> that's it, I really I'm have sure. to say, uh, it's a but, process. You, you read the script and, and, and you like it or you don't like it and then you talk to the director or you talk with, with friends about it and you, and you read it again, all that, and it's more like a process. And sometimes you don't find quality. And then after some, after reading it the second time, you find something interesting. It's always like a process. Like, hmm. like uh, well, this time you made the right call. Um, congratulations on, on an extraordinary piece of work. Film will live a long time. Uh, so you. hope you're proud. Of I it. hope so. And Jamie, come on in. Hello. So I want to say thank you to Elliot. Thank you to Simon for, for being with us and for sharing your insights. Thank you to everyone watching at home. Hello. Um, and I want to let you know about some events we have upcoming. So August 3rd, we have an event called Yiddish Power, Yiddish Magic, or possibly Yiddish Magic, Yiddish Power. It's uh, there's Harry Potter and Yiddish involved and you wanna be there. Um, also, this our screening of The Tobacconist goes all the way through August 7th. The details for both of those things are at our website, jccdet.org slash cultural arts. There it is at the bottom of your screen. And also part of the joys of having Elliot here is that Film Festival, the Detroit Jewish Film Festival this year will be 
in October. It will be virtual and will be a partnership with the Detroit Film Theater. So we're very excited about that to bring you a really exceptional online virtual film experience. So thank you again to Elliot. Thank you again to Simon. And thank you all for being here. Have a great day. Thanks, Jamie. Thank a pleasure meeting you, Simon. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah, it was a pleasure too.